I'm going to show you how to use the building grid, which is really handy for aligning and doing ooh, look at that flag over there. <laughs> mathematically precise constructions in Second Life. Now, here we go. There are two basic ways to get there. One of them is, of course, if you can right click the ground and click create, so you call up these uh, creation editing tools. If you click on edit here, you can see it says use grid. Now that will specify whether the grid comes on or not. I'll show you how. Click create and just click and you have a normal plywood cube. Now you see these lines, those white lines? That's the grid. If I turn it off, then you're not going to see the grid. I turn it back on and on top of that I can set options. Keep in mind this is the first way. Now the second way is you go to the tools menu. See grid, snap to grid and grid options. That's basically the same sort of thing. So I can click on the options. Now what do these do? Well for example if I were to want a finer degree of precision I'll show you how this works first of all snapping to grid. Notice how my it's moving smoothly and I'm just moving back and forth. But if I want to snap, all I have to do is drag up or down onto the grid lines themselves. Now watch this, okay? I see move up, snaps. Move down, snap. Same thing, you can see these little white arrows. Snap, snap, snap. Now if I just drag on the edges, now you can see it snaps to those specified values. If I want a finer grid, right now it's snapping in increments of 0.5 meters, so two, two point, you know, oh, 202 meters, 202.5, 203 meters. So something finer. We'll enter, for example, 0 0.25. Now watch what happens. You're going to see there's more lines. It's more dense. You can make this very dense. In fact, if you want to go down to a small number, it's going to become a very dense grid like that. So what you can also do, just change that back to 0.5, you can click this enable subunit snapping. This will also divide it for you. Click that, check it on. Okay, now you see this is sometimes a um, preferable way because it shows the gradiated lengths of these ruler lines, which helps you get a feel for, okay, this is a main, one of the main units and these are the subunits in between. So visually it's easier and also what can aid you visually, you can set the grid opacity. So if you set it very low like that, the grid is going to appear faint, fainter gray. Uh, you can set it up there, okay, and then you can set it back all the way if you want it to be opaque. Uh, white grid that you can see a lot clearer. Ah, now you may have wondered what this means here. Grid extents, also in meters. Well, you know this little, these handles, when I mouse over one of them, they bulge, hello little bulgy things. That's another way to position things on a 3D grid. Remember, Second Life is a 3D world as I hold down the Alt key and I click and I move around to cam scan, as it were. Now, I can move, I can click actually, click any of these to move an object. You see, these lines come up. It looks like graph paper, but it's in 3D. That can also let me snap. You notice how it's snapping to the coordinates? Now if I set the grid extents, if I set it to say 1, then it'll appear short. If I click here, okay, you see there's not much, but if I want to, to get a broader view of how I might move this a great distance, I could set it to 99, and then you'll see it's like this gigantic, uh, looks like a giant tennis court mesh as it were. So that's what that does. So, what else can we do with this grid? Well, you may have noticed early in tools, there was something snap object X, Y to grid. That means the X and Y axes right there. That will help you align something to grid without having to numerically type in those values. That's done, of course. The quicker way, as you've seen, is just to go to oh, Shift X. Remember, for this one to work, since it's used the Shift key, the chat bar must be closed. So we can drag this, we'll just free drag it anywhere, okay? And then shift, okay, X. See how that moved? You can move it anywhere and then shift X. And that ensures when you click it, see, notice it's aligned. It's aligned precisely to the grid. I'm also briefly going to touch on these ruler modes because this is quite applicable. Normally it's set to world, but as you can see I've clicked it and set it to local. Now what does that do? Well, for example, if I set it back to world, note the numbers in the edge. Okay, these are the, the coordinates in meters relative to the entire region. 
So it can go up to, at the very edge, it'll go up to uh, uh, 255 point, you know, just at the very edge. Because a region, if you click the map, zoom in, I'm in the obscure region, each region is 256 by 256 meters. So we'll go up to, yeah. <laughs> okay, now, if I set this to loco, it takes the original starting point of before I dragged it as a point of relativity, which means it's easier to see than describe. Okay, I click this green one, to the green arrow, and you see zero. Why is it zero? Because that's the point of origin. That's where it started. Notice if I move it over, so I moved it relatively 0.5 meters from that point of origin. Now if I let go and if I click on it again, local, it's going to show this as the new point of origin. While I'm still at it, I might as well show you how to use the grid with your attachments. Now it's very similar with one striking difference. <laughs> now you create and you say just uh, a spear, and I can just make this smaller. It's alright. And then I'm going to attach this more, attach, say to my, uh, my right hand. Okay. So I got the spear in my hand. Now you see the same arrows for positioning come. I can click and drag and you have the grid, except the grid now looks like it's an angle. It's relative. Switch that to attachment. Now with the ruler mode attachment, instead of, uh, you know, being relative to the world, like in, a, in an in-world object, of course, as we've seen, it would be world. Now, since, well, let me delete that, right click, edit. Now, since it says attachment, what that means is from the original position of where that attachment goes, because every attachment has a default coordinate. So say I slipped and I, I moved it off to the side. Well, it's attached to the right hand. So to find my way back there, I just drag. Okay, now I know that's relatively close on that red, the, the x-axis. Then I can zoom in and the blue arrows are kind of hidden, they're kind of hard to see. Actually, they're not showing up at all. This is rather strange. Hmm. Well, I can drag it back there, <laughs> even though it's not showing, and drag it back to zero. Zero's the point of origin. So that also helps too, and of course we have local, like in the in-world objects. And that helps with fine-tuning. So attachments often require fine-tuning, so remember what you can always do. You don't have to go off to the side can free drag like that until such time if you want to snap you just move it up and it snaps I'm being watched <laughs> Ooh, cool wind up hello there little dude <laughs> so let's take what we learned and wrap it up second life's building grid in a practical situation which would be for example aligning the walls of a house this is something that comes up a lot right click create click the ground so we have a cube now size 10 by 10, nice and flat floor. Now I just can drag this over. Ooh, these resin things too, cool. We're all building. Okay, now remember what I did before? Hold Shift, press X to align it. Now remember, as it says, it snaps object X, Y to grid. Sometimes you'll find you have to align the Z axis too. So let's just set that to 29. So it's a nice round number right there. And as I drag it up, then it'll also it'll still be aligned to the grid. Next, okay, hold shift, click the positioning arrow to drag so I have a copy, basic building. And then after that one thing, you'll notice very clearly when I hold control, rotate is control, like that. I can hold control and then free, rotate it. You'll notice it has its own grid right out here. So if I just let it snap with the arrowhead to right there, release, then we got it. And then I can just drag it up like this, you see. I can zoom in, hold down Alt key, move the mouse, and see it's aligned right there. Some textures make this more evident than others. I can drag it over to the side. Ooh, I can just zoom in. Now how are we gonna get that aligned? There we go. You notice when you zoom in, sometimes it shows finer increments. If you're zoomed out, it's not going to show as fine increments as it does when you're magnified. So notice right there, well, at the very edge, let go, how that is aligned. Snap, snap to grid. 